Okay, video two. We last looked at the causes of exploration. What would cause you to leave your home, to travel thousands of miles away, to be gone for months or years at a time, to risk your life? It was very dangerous. Like, why would you do that? And it's very expensive. So this is going to take us to problems and solutions, right? How did Europeans solve the problem of getting goods? We know that that Silk Road collapses, right? And they still want the things. Just because um, something's not available. So think of during COVID, right? There were lots of things because of the trade supply lines that we couldn't receive. We couldn't get. It's not that we didn't want them. We just couldn't access them. And people were willing to pay more if they had to. Uh, people were willing to drive or travel to, especially if it was something that you had to have. Um, and, and so people, again, back then in the 1400s, 1500s, there's no, they're no different. If all of a sudden you want to cook a recipe and you can't get some of your spice ingredients, you might travel someplace else. You might be willing to pay more for them. And so that's what we see happening. And again, we have that background motivation of, wait, I could be doing this and I could be making the money for these trade goods. So the first problem we have is navigation. Nobody's been there before, so we don't have maps to get us there. And we don't have the tools to help us figure out how to get there. I don't know about you, but I couldn't just get in a boat and sail. I mean, I know using the sun, which way is north, south, east, west, but I have to stop and think about it. And, you know, how would you get in a boat and go someplace? And no, you can't take your cell phone with you, right? And so, and also a ship. How do you make sure that you have a ship that's safe enough? to travel and also if you're going to get trade goods you need something that's big enough to bring back what you're selling or buying and selling okay so what we see is that the problem is that trade goods from asia such as silk spices tea porcelain and jewels okay were still in demand but because the silk road had become unsafe with the fall of the Ungol, Mongol, Mongol empire there we go they couldn't get it. And no one had sailed to Asia before. So what do we see? Here are some of the problems too. Technology, dangers, and expense. So how do you overcome those? Again, we already looked at some of the early ships, right? Square sails, single mass, a rudder that's really for balance more so than steering. And so you have to be able to sail against the wind. So just look at the difference in these drawings of a ship, right? And, and the one on the right is probably the one that you think of most when you think of sailing and exploration. The one on the left is probably like the one you drew in kindergarten, right? And so what you notice, though, is that we have triangular sails because even you in kindergarten were probably drawing something with a triangular sail. You probably weren't drawing a square sail. Right. And then it has many mass and it's basically like making more horsepower. It's like we're going from a five horsepower one sail to something with a hundred horsepower, right? Something that's huge. And then we have a uh, different mass and then also the triangular sails. And I can't explain it very, very well, but it allows the ship to zigzag. And by zigzagging, you can actually sail against a wind you can actually use the wind in different ways to help push you forward. Right, so the first ships that are capable of doing a sea voyage were invented by the Portuguese. And yes, this is a real invention. Okay. It's, they were called caravels and caracks or caracks. The caravel is your trade ship. Okay. The carac, Karak is probably how you say it, is allowed for defense. So the Karak is what you think of when you think of that pirate ship with the cannons on it and um, big, thick walls on it. Okay, And um, also the Karak is going to be able to store the ship. So it's those big pirate ships that you're thinking of. The Caravel is going to be a little bit smaller. They're actually not that big. Uh, I saw a replica of Columbus's ship in Spain and Maybe it's the size of a tractor trailer, like the length of a tractor trailer, not what we think of like you know, cruise ships today are, are huge, huge, huge compared to that. 
But if he knows you have, again, many mast and the sails, deep cargo. Now, these ships didn't have beds and <clears throat> such for the sailors. You know, they usually slept on deck. Um, usually you didn't want to go below deck because there were rats and seawater. And it was not a very nice area. All right. So we solved the problem of ships, the Portuguese, thank you, right? Create these cracks and caravels. But what about navigation? How do you get where you're going? All right. So navigate, navigate, the word nava refers to ships, like your navy, right? And to gate is to go. So it's navigating is deciding where your navy is going to go. All right. And so you have to know latitude and longitude. And the way you remember these two is latitude. It's like the rungs of a ladder. OK, it goes up or down. Right. And then longitude are those long lines. They go north and south. And if you know your latitude and your longitude, you know where you are. So latitude, rungs of a ladder. We can measure the distance of stars, because stars are fixed in the sky, against the horizon. And if you notice the distance, then you can measure your latitude, where you are north or south. Longitude, you have to actually know where you are compared to where you started. So you have to know how long it took you to get where you are, and then so you have to know the distance you traveled and you have to know the time that you've traveled. So, of course, stars were the early navigation. You have the sun, right, the brightest star you can see during the day and the north star. And so this is going to help you find east and west. Astrolabe. So astro meaning star, labe meaning to measure. And the astrolabe was an instrument that the um, Greeks and Muslim sailors, uh, mainly from the Middle East, and they're determining the location and measuring the altitude. So what you do is you would measure where the sun is or the North Star and from the horizon, if you could see the horizon on a moonlit night. And then you would have a chart. And so you, you couldn't just use an astrolabe by itself. It, it came with basically like, here's your box set, right? And you would have charts and you would have the day that you were on. So you had to know what day you were on. And then if you knew the day, you could figure out by the height of the sun or the North Star where you were. And that could tell you where you were north or south of the equator. If you ever go to a Renaissance fair, sometimes you'll see these. All right. Early navigation also used a compass. But the compass only tells you the direction you're going in. It doesn't tell you where you are. So if you want to say that you, I need to go in a northerly direction, the compass is great. But if you want to know where you are right now, the compass is of no use. Here's a sketch of a sailor, probably the navigator or the captain, sitting out on deck. And he notice he has a big compass out on deck. Right, he's using is to make sure that they are trying to follow the right pathway. All right, so this is a world map from 1459. And if you can believe it or not, this map actually measures over six feet across. This is for the wall. So imagine this on, on a big wall. And this was a way for people to show how cultured you were and how interested you were in the world around you. And it's a little bit hard to tell. But you can see that uh, you have Europe, and then Africa is down in that wedge there, right? And then you have Asia and Russia. And if you look closely, you can tell that Europe is the most detailed. I'm going to put this in your list of primary sources that you can analyze and look at a little bit closer. All right. Also, the printing press. Printing press is developed in 1440. Okay? So... We're looking at like 1480s, 1490s with the age of discovery. And so the books, the ability to copy and print books and maps and directions and locations, the charts that you need for the astrolabe, the printing press is what allows information to be shared. And this really helps explode how to build a ship that you need, right? All of that is shared across Europe. And so the printing press, uh, we probably wouldn't have had exploration 
not boom as much as it did without the printing press. All right, map making. Now this map looks like it's upside down, but that's not really how it was created. But to us, it's, it is upside down. So you have Europe at the bottom and Africa at the top, right? And then you have the Americas. So believe it or not, the bottom side of the Americas, that is North America. And then you have South America. This is a French map from 1566. So you can see how if you don't have a good map, you might have difficulty getting where you're going. All right? Look at that. And here's with me flipping it so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so technology. They had the solution to create ocean-worthy ships, triangular sails, moving the rudder so it was used for steering, many masts, uh, astrolabes, compasses, and maps for navigation. Let's talk about the dangers. All right, so we have what we need to go sailing. What dangers are you gonna have? Oh no, I don't have that finished here. I will post that in the next video. All right, I'm gonna end this video here and I will catch up the rest of this.